Coming up on UT10 News in HD, students taking online classes are getting disconnected. And we'll also look at a new technology taking students out of this world. Plus, Rayvon Isaiah covered the soccer battle for I-75. Your News in 10 Minutes starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ashley Karsten. And I'm Mackenzie Keyline. Blackboard has been causing problems for universities nationwide. The online learning system is kicking students off the website, freezing up, and not saving test answers. Three weeks ago, UT installed a Blackboard service pack that created these problems. Usually when you get a service pack from a vendor for software that is supposed to be working, it'll fix a few bugs here and there. We are getting service packs that fix hundreds and hundreds of, of bugs and, and things that you'd think would have been fixed before they even released it. UT has until the end of the year to decide to renew their annual contract with Blackboard. In Ohio, approximately five kids are sold into prostitution and sex slavery every day. Which is why UT held a very unique conference at the Student Union. Toledo is the fourth largest city for prostitution and child slavery. To raise awareness, UT held the eighth annual International Human Trafficking, Prostitution and Sex Conference last Thursday. The conference featured several international speakers and researchers who held workshops and presentations to educate the community. The only way that we can start um, to reduce the problem is to become aware and identify the problem. Associate Professor of Social Work Dr. Celia Williamson says it will take several steps to prevent human trafficking. We need to attack supply, the victims coming in demand the customers purchasing and distribution the traffickers and those who support the traffickers and work for that industry. We've got to attack all of those, not just one side. For more information on the conference, log on to www.prostitutionconference.com. For UT10 News, I'm Heather Dotson. Thanks, Heather. A UT student is going bald for a cause. Nancy Noah is one of 44,000 people shaving their heads this year to support the St. Baldrick's Foundation. St. Baldrick's is a charity that funds research for childhood cancer. Noah's goal is $1,500 and whoever donates the most money can shave a portion of her head. And what I'm trying to like do is to help fight childhood cancer and hopefully help a lot of kids. The event will take place in McComas Village at the Pi Beta Phi House on October 12th. Students on the Health Science Campus are learning anatomy in a unique way. Reporter Georgina White takes us to the lab. Plastination is the process of preserving donated body specimens for students and researchers. They receive their bodies from a human donation program. UT has received over 4,000 bodies benefiting more than just the neuroscience department. Physician assistant program, human donation science, uh, physical therapy, sometimes they use uh, in the occupational therapy. UT's neuroscience department has been doing this since 1987. UT is one of the most advanced places for anatomical science because you can really have the plastination as a modern way of teaching. If you're interested in finding out more about the body donation program, contact Diane Dullier at 419-383-4109. I'm Georgina White for UT10 News. The new renovations at the Ritter Planetarium are out of this world. Kim Norton had a close encounter with the new changes. UT's Ritter Planetarium Observatory is finishing up a four-month-long renovation. The $350,000 in changes includes a 5.1 surround sound system, seating, carpeting, and a fresh coat of paint. The majority of the funds were awarded by President Jacobs and went to replace the 44-year-old projector with an all-new digital system. Director of the planetarium, Dr. Michael Cushing, is happy to welcome this world-class system. We're by far the most advanced planetarium in the area now with this new system. Um, it displays 6.5 million pixels on, the, on our 40-foot dome, so it really is quite spectacular. Many UT students say the aging facility was in need of a change. It was really cluttered, there weren't enough seats, so half the time a lot of people had to stand up in the planetarium. All UT community members are invited to attend a special grand opening Saturday, October 15th. For UT 10 News, I'm Cam Norton. Student government is asking students to review dining on campus. Reporter Robin Ashton looked into these mystery shoppers. Shoppers will write about their experience at food locations including Rocky's Grill, Starbucks, the Carter POD, the student union, and the dorm dining halls. Each shopper will fill out a form rating the food quality, service, 
and cleanliness of each location. Sometimes, you know, you come in to eat and tables to be dirty and to be food already still on the table, sometimes on the floor. Like, I think maintenance could be a little bit better. Student government says student reviews will help improve dining on campus. The feedback that, that they, the committee receives is tangible. It's, it's from students. Um, it not only raises the customer service, but the quality of the food, and it's really helpful when they're looking to make changes. Any student can become a mystery shopper by emailing sgpresident at utilito.edu and will receive 25 rocket dollars every month. For UT 10 News, I'm Robin Ashton. UT is making campus more bike friendly. In August, two new bike pumps were installed. The pumps are located in the bike corrals near Ritter Planetarium and the West Ramp parking garage. The project costs $400. Student government hopes these pumps and bike corrals will reduce parking on campus. The bike pumps are free to all UT students who use their rocket card to access the corrals. Stick around, we'll be back with Rayvon Isaiah in your Rocket Sports in 30. There's nothing more exciting than a rocket victory, but UT athletes achieve more than just superior athletic recognition. As representatives of UT, our student athletes are community leaders and academic achievers. Our tutoring, mentoring, and community service programs are continuing to build champions in sports, in the classroom, and after graduation. Learn more about Rocket Student Athletes at utmatters.com. Welcome back, I'm Rayvon Isaiah and this is your UT 10 Sports. This was an all-conference weekend for UT Sports. While the volleyball team struggled, the football and soccer teams dominated away from home. On Friday, the UT women's soccer team faced their rival BG at Cochran Field. The Lady Rockets controlled the whole game having 13 shots on goal compared to BG6. With 20 minutes left in the second half, sophomore Rachel McLeod would score the game-winning goal. The Rockets defeated the Falcons by a final score of 1-0, giving them their fourth consecutive win over BG. UT senior goalie Vicki Traven had two saves against the Falcons, giving Traven her second shutout of the season. Coach Brad Evans is pleased to be 3-0 in the MAC. All wins are good wins, uh, particularly in conference, and um, obviously beating BG, you know, it's a, a local rivalry for all UT and BG sports. Uh, I'm excited for the players. I thought they worked hard. I thought we played well enough to win. From the soccer field to the hardwood, the women's volleyball team took on Northern Illinois at Savage Arena on Saturday. After falling short the first two sets, the Rockets aced their third set. Early on, senior Cassie Cleespies had a powerful kill. Later, sophomore Jordan Kilty slams down another kill for the Rockets. She had seven kills that set, giving UT the win. But the Huskies would not give up easily as they win the fourth set with an impressive spike from Sarah Angelos. Northern Illinois outserved the Rockets 3-1. Coach Greg Smith is, hopes to improve before next week's game. Just the little things, the communication, just the teamwork. We got a whole week to prepare for, um, for next weekend and hopefully we can show up just the little things and just get better. Speaking of improvements, the football team was away dominating against the Temple Owls on Saturday. In the second quarter, Temple's Evan Rodriguez scored a touchdown, which would be their last. From then on, the Rockets took over. They closed out the game with 50, 157 yards rushing, 148 yards passing, and a total of five touchdowns with a two-point conversion. The Rockets soared above the aisles with a final score of 36-13. to Eric Page is now only six catches away from breaking UT's all-time record for receptions. Didn't he also win the Paul Horning Award? Yes, he was one of three athletes chosen as the most versatile player in the nation. Wow, all right, thanks, Rayvon. That's it for UT10 News. For the latest breaking news from campus, go to our website, ut10news.com. And you can always watch our award-winning newscasts on YouTube and Facebook, where you can get caught up on all of your campus news whenever you want. For Mackenzie Keyline, Rayvon Isaiah, and all of our crew, I'm Ashley Karsten. Have a great week, and stay tuned for more news from the UT campus.